WCBI News at 10 starts now. Mississippi educators are organizing for action. Thanks for joining us tonight at 10. They're planning how to best get their voices heard following the most recent legislative session. Courtney Ann Jackson explains what is causing the fallout. Educators traditionally have been quiet, I think due in part because they have servant hearts, but also because of previous attempts to silence them. Educators will not be silenced anymore. They're in fighting mode after a one-two punch from lawmakers. First, the teacher pay raise debate that ended with a $1,500 raise being approved. Then... I think the icing on the cake, per se, was the deceptive tactics used by the leadership to insert the additional $2 million for vouchers into the DFA bill. Nakia Beeman is one of those teachers tired of feeling silenced. There's something going on here that we don't understand, but teachers know. We know it is a last straw. We have to fight for our kids. We have to fight for ourselves and actually gain some integrity with the teaching profession. She's one of 40,000 likes on a Facebook group talking about how to fight back, even throwing out the idea of a strike. The beehive has been kicked. We have to get moving. This is the time we see teachers in other states gaining momentum in their efforts. This is very much the time to do so on our behalf, too. But a strike is technically illegal here. Mississippi teachers did strike back in 1985, but the legislature turned around and passed a law banning teachers from future strikes. Regardless of whether they strike, there could be implications for the upcoming statewide elections. I think MAD and eager to go to vote later this year would probably be a good good capture of what educators are feeling. A survey is also raising the possibility of a one day statewide sick out where everyone takes off sick the same day. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. A conference at Mississippi State is sharing research and resources for children reading with reading difficulties. TK Martin Center for Technology and Disability is hosting a dyslexia conference to bring awareness to the disorder and other related learning differences. The event focuses on what dyslexia is, its characteristics, and its role in school classrooms. Dozens of teachers, parents, principals, speech, and language pathologists are participating. We are really hoping to be able to create an environment of which these people can make connections with each other. Um, these parents can get in contact with the right kind of psychometrists and be able to make those connections to get the help they need in their schools for the teachers. The conference will be going on until tomorrow afternoon. For more information on the event, just visit our website, WCBI.com. Nearly 10 million children live with dyslexia, but even though it's very common, resources are still very limited. Our Jory Talley talks to with the experts and finds that researchers and advocates are pushing for more awareness about ways to help those diagnosed. Kathy Prater's dyslexia research and knowledge stems from a personal connection. It all started 11 years ago when her son was diagnosed. He was in the third grade. Since then, she's become a research advocate at Mississippi State and the coordinator for the Ignite Dyslexia program at the TK Martin Center for Technology and Disability. The characteristics of dyslexia are pretty well pronounced. It affects reading, writing, and spelling. Um, it also can affect math, memory, the ability to figure out what word you want to say. It's called word recall. Sometimes they'll just get stuck and that word won't come out. Dyslexia affects 20% of the general population and one in five students. One in five sounds like a really small number, but when you think about the entire group of education students nationwide, that's eight and a half million children. It's a pretty significant issue that we need to bring awareness to. Prater says there are some resources for students with dyslexia, but they are scarce. We do receive some services with um, the school district, but I also do homeschool to help her um, because of the different um, learning difficulties that she has. It's the best um, and ideal setting for her to be able to learn at her own pace. Shana Hudson's eight-year-old was diagnosed with dyslexia about a year ago. Dyslexia is just the way the brain is wired. She is brilliant. My daughter is brilliant. She is smart. She is happy. She 
loves to, you know, want to read and know what's in books, but her brain just takes a little bit more time to to get there and to understand it. Hudson's daughter has been going to the TK Martin Center's dyslexia clinic since August, and they have seen remarkable improvement in her reading skills. Prater's son is now a freshman in college studying to be an electrician. He is able to do things that are different than traditional book learning. They struggle in traditional book learning, but they exceed in many other areas. These are people like Steven Spielberg. The D.K. Martin Center's Dyslexia Clinic provides assessments and intervention for students with dyslexia. Time now to toss things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson to get a first look at our rainy forecast. Hey there, Keith. Scott, lots of rain around here today. The rain really wrapping on up. We do have some low clouds out there, and those clouds will hang tight and be tough all night long. Temperature is currently in the 50s, and that's about where we will be all night long, too. Notice the rain and the storms moving away, but the clouds will linger as we go throughout the course of the night. We are in the 50s, and that's where we are going to be all night long. So maybe another degree or two. There could be a little bit of fog that could develop later on. But after that cloudy start on Friday, we should see a few more breaks in the cloud deck, and that will punch us back into the 70s. I'll have you weekend forecast, Scott, in just a few minutes. A 35-year-old man faces a capital murder charge in connection with the death of a four-month-old girl. Randy Dale Jr. was arrested by the Itawamba County Sheriff's Department after a 911 call came in from Tremont about an injured infant. Sheriff Chris Dickinson says the four-month-old child was being cared for by a babysitter who had left the infant alone with her husband. The sheriff says the child was taken to the hospital in Amory, then flown to Labonner Children's Hospital where she was placed on life support. We're told the infant passed away this morning. Sheriff Dickinson says the baby suffered traumatic injuries consistent with shaking. It's sad. You know, it's not like somebody jumping on me. You know, I can defend myself, but you've got a four-month-old that you know, it leaves me kind of speechless for these types of crimes. I, you know, I, I, can't wrap, I can't wrap my head around why you would want to do that to a four-month-old. A heartbreaking story for sure. Now, Bond was denied for Junior during his initial appearance this afternoon. The sheriff says the babysitter is not facing any charges. Slick roads may have played a role in a one-car accident in Octibaha County that sent the driver to the hospital. Fire coordinator Kirk Rosenhan says the driver was going west on Highway 82 just before 4 p.m. when it went off the road near the Hickory Grove Road exit. He says the SUV spun out of control and landed in a wooded area. Rescuers had to use chainsaws to free the driver. She was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The East Octibaha Fire Department and the Highway Patrol responded to that accident. Plan for a major renovation and expansion of the Bancorp South Conference Center. They're moving right along. Two below city council members agreed to a $16 million loan financed by bonds to pay for the project. The project includes new comfort space that will be built west of the current facility. There will be a covered walkway between the conference center and the Bay Corp South Arena. Currently, there is 10,000 square feet of conference space, but the expansion would more than double that usable space. The new debt will not require a tax increase. Temperatures warming on up for the weekend. We should be well into the 70s, if not lower 80s here. That will come with the price. We do have some storms in the forecast, too. More on that after the break. Your WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Here's our off insurance time lapses from Columbus, Tupelo, Vernon at Durham's Pharmacy, Louisville, Mississippi. Right there, look at that. Showers and storms rumbling on through here today. More rain than anything else. Not really a lot of thunder and no severe weather in our area. All that rain now done and has moved off to the east. Now we still may see a little bit of light shower activity with those low clouds that are in place. Rainfall today anywhere from about a half inch to in some spots over two inches of rain. Very heavy in some locales, especially northwest of Columbus. Now the heaviest rain now right along the coast, right along Interstate 10, and that's where it's going to be for the rest of tonight. But those clouds will be holding on tough. Notice how we should Likely stay mainly cloudy all night long and fairly overcast tomorrow morning. 
But temperatures are in the 50s now. We'll be in the 50s when you wake up. Pretty gloomy, but by noon pushing 70. And we'll start to see more in the way of breaks as we go throughout the course of the day. And that should allow temperatures to moderate back into the 70s. Low to mid 70s in some spots. Maybe only low 70s if those, clou if those clouds hold down hold on a little bit longer. If we get rid of the clouds a little bit earlier, we may actually flirt with the upper 70s in some spots. But let's just say mid 70s as an average out there. Winds variable at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. That's the way it's looking for our Friday here as we close out the work week. One system on the way out. There it goes. The next one waiting in the wings here. That will come on into play for the weekend. So storm chances coming on back, even though tomorrow will be fairly tame. We'll push those storms down to the south, as I mentioned. We'll thin out the clouds a little bit, but it may not go completely clear. Don't plan on that. Plan on at least some partly cloudy skies at some point tomorrow, let's hope. We will have a returning warm front on Saturday, so clouds build back in. We may see a few showers or storms earlier in the day, but the better chance, I think, is going to be in the afternoon and probably into the evening. Now, this particular model is indicating a complex of maybe some strong storms late in the day into the evening. Uh, that's not definite just yet, but there could be some storms around during the second half of our Saturday. Also in the Sunday, too, another wave of storms. Some of those can be locally strong, too. And then we'll still have the rain chances going Monday. We'll clear all of this out sometime Monday, and that will give us some drier weather for Tuesday and Wednesday. There could actually be some more active weather in here with a stronger cold front on Thursday. But in the near term, we're looking at a drier day tomorrow with some developing sun. We are in the 70s. Low 80s for your weekend. The best chance for storm Saturday, probably in the second half of the day. Storms possible Sunday into your Monday. There's your AccuWeather 7 day forecast. A little girl who has already had the fight of her life faces a rematch. Find out how you can get in her corner when we come back. WCBI News at 10 with Scott Martin. Welcome back, everyone. According to childhelp.org, every 10 seconds there's a report of child abuse. We'll learn more tonight in our Hill Talk with Baptist. Hi, I'm Christina Shumpert Chapman. I'm a social worker in the emergency room and a member of the case management team at Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. Tonight, I want to talk to you about child abuse. Mississippi law defines an abused child as a child whose parent, guardian, or custodian, or any person responsible for his care or support has caused or allowed the child to be the victim of sexual abuse, sexual exploitation, emotional abuse, mental injury, non-accidental physical injury, or other maltreatment. Infants and toddlers are the most vulnerable because the developmental stages they go through, such as inconsistent sleep patterns, colic, and toilet training, may frustrate caregivers. Abuse is the most common cause of serious head injury in infants. In toddlers, abdominal injury is also common. Some indicators of physical abuse include any type of contact that results in bodily injury, such as bruising, abrasions, broken bones, internal injuries, burning, missing teeth, and skeletal injuries. Examples include hitting or slapping a child with an extension cord, hand, belt, fist, broom handle, brushes, or other objects, putting the child in hot water, cutting the child with a knife or other sharp object, shaking or twisting arms or legs or yanking the child by the arm, putting tape on the child's mouth, tying the child up with rope or cord, throwing the child across the room or down the stairs. Anybody who knows or has reason to suspect child abuse is required by law to report it to the Mississippi Department of Child Protection Services. Reporting can be done by dialing 1-800-222-8000 or online at reportabuse.mdcps.ms.gov. Join us next time for Health Talk with Baptist. Mail your topic suggestions to Health Talk at WCBI.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. Here at home, 10-year-old Lila Usri faces another battle after her cancer is back. Many of you may remember her story as we followed her family's journey after Lila's diagnosis in 2017. Lila's mom now says she is in need of a bone marrow transplant. Doctors noticed a decline in her blood counts and moved up her six-month checkup to this week. Today's results showed that Lila is relapsing. Now Lila's looking for her match. To register, 
to, you can register at Be The Match. You can find that link to, at our website, WCBI.com. The Rebels lock up Kermit Davis, and his contract details are now official. The SEC Coach of the Year earning some cash. More coming up next in sports. with Tom Apple. Ole Miss making sure to keep the reigning SEC Coach of the Year in Oxford. Kermit Davis and the Rebels agreeing to a four-year extension, but the details of that contract have now become available. Check out the cash for Kermit Davis. Four-year, $12 million extension over the next four years. Incentives including making up to $75,000 if the pavilion averages an attendance of 9,000 people or 6,500 season tickets are sold. 100,000 extra bucks for winning the SEC Tournament Championship. $25,000 more for each NCAA Tournament win up to the Final Four. Get to the Final Four, an additional $125,000. And if the Ole Miss Rebels are the national champions of men's college basketball, It'd be an extra $250,000 for Kermit Davis. Ole Miss continuing to invest in its future on the basketball side. The Rebels extending Yolette McPhee McEwen to a new four-year contract extension that runs through 2023. The Rebels women's basketball program improved its SEC win total in Coach Yo's first season, while also taking down a ranked opponent on the road for the first time since 2011. That win being in January against 16th ranked Kentucky. Southern Miss hires former Troy Vice Chancellor of Athletics Jeremy McLean as its newest athletic director. McLean, a Holka native, spent three years as the deputy director of Southern Miss Athletics before taking the job at Troy in 2015. During his time at Troy, the Trojans athletics programs set attendance records in almost every major sport. Mississippi State responds to its series loss to LSU in a big way, bashing Louisiana Monroe 21-8, Warhawks getting the touchdown plus the two. The 21 runs being the most for the Bulldogs since 2010. The bats were obviously awake, especially Jake Mangums, batting five for six in the win along with three RBIs. The five hits moves Mangum three hits away from topping Jeffrey Ray as Mississippi State's all-time leader in hits, and he's now sixth on the SEC's all-time list. There's a very good chance Jake Mangum will be welcomed back to Starkville next week as the Bulldogs' all-time leading hitter. Friday, first pitch, 5.30 against the Tennessee Vols. Ethan, Mal Ethan Small set to take the mound. No surprise there. Same with Saturday. JT Ginn to take first pitch at 5 p.m. against Tennessee. And Sunday at 1 p.m., projected Peyton Plumley. The Bulldogs have been searching for that Sunday guy. We'll see if Plumley sticks. MSU sweeping Tennessee a year ago in Starkville, but was swept the last time at Robert M. Lindsay Field in Knoxville. Ole Miss with a big opportunity to bounce back after its midweek letdown against North Alabama. The Rebels set for a weekend series against top 25 ranked Florida. The Gators have won six out of the last eight against the Rebels, the most recent being a sweep in Gainesville back in 2017. Ole Miss and Florida begin their series at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow. Will Etheridge on the mound for the Rebels? That's no surprise either. Saturday, late first pitch, 7 p.m., Doug Nikhazy set to start for Ole Miss. A big day for Oxford on Saturday with the Grove Bowl at 3 and the first pitch at 7 p.m. And then Sunday, 1.30 first pitch. We'll see if that sticks with the possible weather in the forecast on Sunday. 
and the illustrious TBD set to pitch for the Rebels. Ole Miss still in search for that man to wrap up its Sunday series here during the SEC season. That's it for sports. We'll have last year forecast coming up next. Here's our seven day. <laughs> Look at that developing sun tomorrow. Won't that be a treat after our gloomy weather After today, weather today? we're going to want to see it those It was chilly today. It felt more like a winter day. But tomorrow, once we see a little bit of sun, after that gloomy start, it should be a little bit better. Warmer this weekend. It won't be an all-day washout Saturday, but there could be some storms around even into your Sunday, too. We are now warming things up as we get into April here. All right. We'll gladly take the warm-up. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.